YouTube's recommendation system is pretty hit or miss. They do get it right sometimes, but the ever-elusive algorithm doesn't really care about showing you great videos. It just gives you ones that it thinks will keep you on the site the longest. This often ends up favoring channels that post all the time, which is why if you even think about clicking a Twitch highlight video, 200 more will appear on your homepage. These sorts of videos aren't inherently bad, but they have contributed to the shift in how people view things on YouTube, which is that now everything is capital C content and consistency is more important than creativity. This makes it really hard for smaller channels who take a while to produce videos to get the recognition they deserve, and that's a bummer. So I am going to use whatever leverage I have as a somewhat successful YouTube man who talks about why games are bad while wearing a bag on his head to highlight a few creators who you probably don't know but should. These are some of my favorite channels on YouTube, and if you like the stuff I make, I'm very confident you'll like their stuff as well. So please check them out so that their channels blow up and they get more subs than me, and then when each of them makes a video like this where they give shoutouts to smaller channels, they'll feel inclined to feature mine, and I'll ascend to a higher level of Veen. Anyway, let's start with Wizawat. Wizawat is one of the newest and smallest channels on this list, but that isn't an indication of the quality of his work. His style, both in terms of writing and editing, is well established and highly polished, and I think if you watched one of his videos without knowing his sub count, you'd assume that this was his job. What draws me most to his work is how passionate he is when talking about games, and this can be seen in all sorts of ways, whether it be talking about the complex mechanics of Mario's movement, or the stories of the characters in Stardew Valley that related most to his life. There's something special about about clearly being able to see how passionate someone is about a topic, and his work is full of that. Whenever I watch one of his videos, I'll think only three minutes have passed, but then realize that the video is actually almost over. While you should watch his entire catalog, a good place to start is his video on what his girlfriend taught him about Super Mario 64. It's a look at how the combination of him playing it casually, him learning to speedrun it, and him watching her play it got him to appreciate it in an entirely new way. It's kind of like a cousin of the Gaming for a Non-Gamer series, so if you enjoy those videos, Videos, which my analytics page says you do, you'll love this one. That's really the message I want to send by showcasing how fantastic Super Mario 64 is. At its best, it embodies challenge, freedom, and creativity, and at its worst, it can be unwound into new experiences that are entirely what you make of it. Next up, we have Heavy Eyed, a New Zealand-based creator who covers everything from obscure indies to the darker sides of the gaming industry to my personal favorite thing he talks about, the language of video games. He's not afraid to cover any topic, regardless of how niche it is or how angry it might make some people, and that's an aspect I really admire about his work, because it's introduced me to a bunch of ideas I never would have thought about had he not covered them. Recently, he started doing some hybrid videos that are kind of a mix between essays and interviews, where he brings on a slate of creators to help break down a topic, giving it a more robust and varied view than what just one person could bring. I was fortunate enough to be in one of them about how the discussions around video games have changed over the years, so if you want to hear me drone on some more about games, then, you know, watch that one. In general, if you like discussions about game design and the industry as a whole, Heavy Eyed is a must watch. As you start to play more and more games, you see patterns emerge, and instead of questioning why, we tend to accept that as an easy means to know what's going on. The lexicon of language within gaming is pretty strict since there is such an urgent need to convey as much information as quickly as possible to players without them getting stuck on the basics every time they enter a new world. So these similarities are more often than not welcomed with open arms. Moving along, we have Eurothug4000. Eurothug makes video essays on all sorts of topics, but the focus of her channel is largely on the aesthetics of video games. A lot of her work examines aspects of certain games that lead to them having engaging spaces to inhabit, ranging from breaking down the chill vibes of beach levels in Mario to exploring the surreal beauty of horror titles like The Evil Within. Her videos have caused me to be far more cognizant and appreciative of the various game spaces I play in, and I think that is the highest compliment I can give her channel. Aside from being being entertaining to watch, her work has actually changed how I look at games, which to me is the mark of an incredible creator. I'd recommend starting with her video titled A Virtual Place to Call Home that focuses on cozy hub and starting areas, and then watch the rest of her stuff from there. They're often residential areas where the player's character resides. Whether they've just moved in or they've lived there for many years, they use the home as a starting point, the calm before the storm of your big adventure ahead. It's normally the place where you learn the ropes, giving you the knowledge needed for the next step of your journey, and it does so in a comforting space. Keeping with the cozy vibe, let me tell you about a Macy.
Amacy is different from most of the creators on this list in that his primary focus isn't on video essays, although they are in his wheelhouse. Instead, his channel is filled with highly stylized short films and music videos that feature footage he's gathered from various games. Through the use of camera tools and other mods, he's able to get shots that frankly seem impossible, and the mixture of his incredible cinematography with well-timed and slick edits creates what can be best described as comfy videos for your soul, which is the channel's tagline, so it checks out. He has the type of videos where you'll watch watch one, and then over the next four hours, systematically work through his entire catalog, and then leave a comment on every video asking him to make more. So you might as well start that process now and give his channel a look. Next is VZ, who I have been a fan of for like six years now. And as it typically goes, his work has only gotten better as time has gone on. He recently returned to making videos after a bit of a hiatus, and his new stuff is easily his best work. It's largely longer form essays that focus on exploring themes and general ideas presented in games and how those things have affected his life in various ways. VZ has the ability to make anything sound interesting, even games you might not think you're interested in. And he's able to talk about complex, and heady subjects without coming off as arrogant or pretentious, which is a tough thing to pull off. If you're looking for a place to start, I'd go with the one on Minecraft as it touches on some ideas about the game that I had been feeling for years but didn't fully know how to voice until I watched it. Honestly, his work is filled with really thoughtful stuff that I wish I had thought of first. If you let the world take you away, there are such beautiful things to see. Landscapes and biomes, rivers, valleys, and mountains. It's all randomly generated and the world doesn't care if you explore it. It is simply there. And so am I. And that's what makes it so cool to me. Continuing with more longer form channels, Laura Crone creates some of the rawest and most thought-provoking essays on the platform. She primarily focuses on films and uses her life experiences and expertise to explore various interesting things about them. This makes her work not only informative, but also really personal, which adds so much weight to the ideas she discusses. Like, she has a video that examines the breakups in both The Social Network and Birds of Prey, alongside breakups from her own life. And it is one of the realest videos I've ever seen and the definition of a must-watch. With that said, I'd probably recommend starting with her lighter stuff first. She has a great piece that breaks down the stunts from Invisible Man, as well as one that critiques the various character motivations in Ready or Not, both of which are great jumping-off points for her work before diving in deeper. Brief rundown of my credentials. I want to lead with the fact that I am not a SAG stunt performer or any other kind of actual pro. I sometimes train with people who are, but my first-hand experience is purely amateur. I got you these grains of salt because I care about you. The next one is a channel I literally heard about for the first time two weeks ago, and it has quickly become one of my favorites. It's called Overanalyzing Avatar, and it does just that. Each video looks at a different episode of the show, and the creator does a sort of commentary breakdown of it. In it, he discusses everything from themes, to animation and composition, to inconsistencies, to funny little observations about stuff that you probably would never think about, but when you hear them, you can't stop thinking about. I'm bringing this up. Katara shouldn't know how to work doors. There's no doors in the igloos or lean-tos back home. All the doors were already open on the scuttled ship they explored. The only doors they ran into at the Air Temple in Omashu were bending doors, and Kyoshi Island had no doors on the buildings at all. A door handle should be a foreign concept to Katara. This is the shit I think about. He manages to get super in the weeds without taking himself too seriously, which is a really good quality to have when it comes to making videos like this. The guy has a huge appreciation for and knowledge of the show, and presents it all with a dry sense of humor. He's pretty new to the whole video making thing, so it's been cool to see the quality of his work improve with each passing video. His newer stuff will give you a better indication of his work, but honestly, it's all worth watching. For those of you who sub to me for my videos on Avatar, this channel is made for you. Dang, this is all my fault. No, Katara, it isn't. Yeah, it kind, kind of is. is. Oh, right. Hey, who's doing the overanalyzing here? Next, we have GC Positive, whose videos consistently remind me that I really need to play more Yakuza and Dragon Quest. The primary focus of his channel is a show called Questrospective, where he does deep dives into various series, tackling them entry by entry. In these, he breaks down pretty much everything about them, from themes to gameplay to what went into their production. They are thorough, yet never boring, and that comes down to the strength of both his writing and performance. Along with Questrospective, he also does reviews and video essays about pretty much anything he 
has a take on. As his name implies, the general vibe of his channel is positivity, and he manages to maintain that even when being critical of games, which is sort of a rarity on YouTube and frankly a nice change of pace. A good place to start is his essay about farm life games that examines the appeal and addictive nature of titles like Harvest Moon and the positive habits that can be formed from playing them. It made me feel less guilty about putting 100 plus hours in Stardew, so honestly, it's worth it for that alone. What if instead of looking at the clock, you listened to your body? Figure out what it could do today, what it couldn't, and then set your mind on what was possible. The amount of energy you have on any given day is more important than the number of hours in it, and the slow, steady climb every farm life possesses is there to remind you of that, even if they tend to forget it from time to time. Hot Cider makes a lot of really cool stuff. In general, he's unafraid to experiment with various formats, and I love that. He's got a lot of incredible essays on video games that are very much worth watching, but my favorite work of his is the stuff that centers around tabletop RPGs. Like he did a whole post-mortem video on one of his campaigns, and his examination of the lessons he learned from running it not only are highly entertaining, but also super educational. He is great at running games, and for any GMs or DMs out there, his experiences will help you improve the way you run. He also just finished the first season of his podcast called Quest in Show, which uses a tabletop system that he created specifically for it. Honestly, he can literally do everything. As a little plug, I got to be a guest on the show, and I played the dumbest wizard ever. It was very fun. The show is a great time, and it never gets bogged down with dice rolls or numbers, and is far more about the role playing, which I think is perfect for a podcast. Hot Cider is a fount of creativity whose drive to innovate will always keep his work fresh, which is why you should go follow him. The Kingdom of Trottleera is in trouble. The king and queen have been kidnapped, leaving the realm in the hands of the unproven Prince Pratt. Unequipped to deal with the many troubles facing him and his people, he turns to the heroic gig economy to combat these troubles and help track down his missing parents. This is where you come in. Last up is Leonardo de Sicci, who I think has the smoothest voice on YouTube. Hi, and welcome to the Sid Course. Like discourse, but my name is Sid. Sid is one of the most fascinating people on the platform. He is a creative powerhouse. Like not only is he a thoughtful writer and a slick editor, but he also makes awesome animations and he even creates all of the background music for his videos. There isn't a part of the creative process that he doesn't build from the ground up. And as a fellow creator, I can't stress enough how impressive that is. He also has some extremely unique life experiences that thankfully he has been willing to share because there is a lot to learn from them. Like one one of his videos examines how Hellblade Senua's sacrifice portrays psychosis, which is something he has been living with for the majority of his life. The goal of his channel is to start discussions about topics surrounding games that often don't get talked about, and I think he's very successful in doing that. I'd recommend starting with his video on the issues he has with third-person action games due to him being blind in one eye. And then, like, you know the drill by now, watch the rest of his stuff. Let me show you what it looks like to me. As you can see, the majority of my vision cone is taken up by the player character. In a lot of cases, at least a third, sometimes half of the screen is blocked by their backs. And the rest of the screen, left to show you the enemy placement, the pathways of the level, etc., are invisible to me. Since this over-the-shoulder perspective came into action from the days of Gears of War and Resident Evil 4, I found that I am terrible at video games. Anyway, I love these channels and I hope you do too. Give them a view, give them a sub, and enjoy your time with them. Along with all of these great channels, if you're looking for more ways to find spectacular creators without having to rely on YouTube's algorithm actually showing you something worth watching, look no further than Nebula. It is a platform made for creators by creators where they don't have to worry about demonetization or appealing to YouTube trends, and you just get good videos recommended to you all the time. It features work from talented creators like Jacob Geller, Philosophy, philosophy tube, extra credits, and now me. Nebula allows creators to experiment with ideas in a way that YouTube really doesn't. There are Nebula originals, podcasts, extended cuts of videos, and other stuff. So if you want to see more of your favorite creators and more of me, Nebula is the place for that. And in even cooler news, Nebula has partnered with CuriosityStream to offer a package deal of both services. So you can get CuriosityStream and Nebula for less than $15 for a whole year. Just follow the link in the description. 
On its own, Curiosity Stream is a great deal. It has thousands of documentaries on pretty much everything you could ever want to know about. Like I watched one called Bounce, How the Ball Taught the World to Play, that's about how the design and properties of a ball influence both people and animals to play with it, and how those responses have morphed into games and traditions over the years. More than anything I've ever watched, it's made me realize that humans really are just taller monkeys. So to get all of that, along with Nebula and the awesome extra content that comes with it for just $15 for the year, follow the link in the description. It helps me, it helps other creators on Nebula, and it helps you by giving you good stuff to watch. Anyway, thanks to CuriosityStream for sponsoring this video. To everyone still here, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day and or nights, and I will see you in the next one.